start shaking like a salt shaker. Okay, am I ready? Is that a good view? Hold on. Straighten up now, straighten up. Get your life together. You're kind of crooked. Just, mm, cause then they just, ugh. Okay. Okay. I think I kind of like that. And the lights look good. How's the sound though? How do you know if it's on? Cause I wonder if the sound does sound better and less echoey with a mic or does it need to be closer? I don't know. We're gonna have to play with it. That's why I said I ain't got time for all this. Now I ain't a professional. I'm just a girl. <laughs> <laughs> let's stop playing let's get ourselves together let's we're, let's figure it out hey friends hey friends hey friends welcome back to my channel it has been a hot minute since i made a video um don't don't do me Okay, because I felt convicted just now, right there. Um, I don't know why I'm so intimidated by YouTube, but I'm gonna get myself together, okay? Um, I am very active though across other social media platforms. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea Wynn. I go by all things C Wynn across all things social media. Um, I am a full-time faith-based mentor, influencer, content creator. It's so weird to say that. Um, but that's me. That's what I do. I run a faith-based monthly mentorship. So if you recognize me from anywhere, it's probably TikTok. Uh, that's where I started building a platform. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I did not ever, ever intend to be a faith-based anything. Okay. Um, I never intended to be any of the things that I am now. That was all God. It was all obedience. And I'm sure I'll make a video on that one day. But for today, I did not plan on making a video at all. I'm still in my jammies. Okay. I, I don't know where this came from, but I got this fire in me because I randomly grabbed this Bible study. Let me show you. Um, TikTok shop actually sent me this Bible study uh, months ago and I, I didn't do anything with it. It's been collecting dust for some time now. I'm just being real. Can I be honest? It's been collecting dust for some time now. Um, but this morning I randomly grabbed it. This is the good and beautiful Bible study. It's the volume one from Alabaster. Again, it's from TikTok shop. I actually have a video on TikTok that I just posted and I linked it in the description. I grabbed this randomly this morning and I turned to a random page. So at the beginning of the book, there's like an index, right? And in the index, it's a really cool setup. Uh, the index shows like what the stories are so you have like jethro and moses you have jonathan you have josiah there's people like the the man born blind you have miriam the five thousand abigail boy jesus all types of stories right um and then it has like the topics so accepting grace repentance loyalty radical change grief hope hospitality all the things um the one i randomly chose was shame and discernment i think i had to sneeze you. Okay, God bless me. It took me to page 150 and I'm telling you what I got from it was so beautiful that I had, I had to make a YouTube video on it. I tried to make a TikTok um, and I just couldn't. I was like, there's way too much involved in this <laughs> for me to make a little two minute clip on it. So I wanted to talk to you guys about it. It's the fact that my seven year old just interrupted me for a snack. It's like... <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. I don't want to feed this kid no more. He eats all day. I'm tired. <clears throat> I don't know why I clown like that. So it took me to page 150. There's a title at the top. It says a story of the man born blind, right? And then there's a synopsis. So apparently in all of these, there's a synopsis, which is a brief summary um, it says in the one that I turned to, it says a man born blind is miraculously healed. His healing restores his whole humanity away from shame and towards a newfound faith and belonging. And then there's a key moment. Mine says John nine. So of course, this is when I pulled my word out and I'm like, Ooh, let's go to John nine. I love John. I love John. I love all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I love all of them. Okay. Um, I love the whole new Testament. Well, who am I trying to fool? I love the Bible. <laughs> Okay, be for real. So uh, it took me to John chapter nine. And now I have read John chapter nine many of times. Um, I already had it all highlighted and so many notes on the side. Look, I will show y'all. I love my Bible. My Bible, by the way, is from Hosanna Revival. And I really do love it. It's a note-taking Bible. Um, so obviously there's a lot of 
note taking sections on the side and I utilize every inch of them. Okay. I love the note taking section. Um, but I have all my notes already written in here. So I've read it before. I've read it many times over, but, um, as y'all will know, as I will tell you guys in the video, there is a part that the Bible study book pointed out that I didn't see. I overlooked y'all. That's why you can read the same scripture over and over and over and you're going to get a different revelation every time. Like it hits, it can hit different every single time. Um, so I, I am going to read it because why am I bringing you into my Bible study without bringing you into my Bible? Amen. Let's read it. Um, I have the NLT version, the New Living Translation. That's one of my faves. Um, so that's what I'm going to be reading from today. My header says Jesus heals a man born blind. So obviously it matches up with where they were taking us in the word. So I'm going to start at verse one and I'm going to read the whole thing. So buckle up y'all. I side note, I really like the creators that actually read the word. You know, like I, I know it's one thing to paraphrase and I'm a great paraphraser. People that know me know that I could paraphrase. Um, but can we read it? It's like, why are we rushing? What's the rush? What's the rush? There's no time limit on YouTube from what I understand. Now, I ain't gonna be no two hours. I ain't gonna read the oh, Genesis to Revelation. But you know what I'm saying? Like, why don't we read more of the Bible? Anyways, let's read the word. Starting in verse one, it says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? In my note section, and I actually did a teaching on this part before, um, in my private community, in my monthly mentorship, I did a live teaching on this part. In my note section, it says, we think everything is our fault when really everything that happens is to give God glory. Why do we keep blaming ourselves for everything or blaming somebody? We want somebody to blame for everything. Why was I dealt the cards that I was dealt? Is it me? What did I do wrong to deserve this? Child... Let's, let's move on. In verse three, it says, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, Go wash yourself in the pool of Sil Siloam. I believe it's Siloam. Go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. Amen. He His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was and others said, no, he just looks like him. But the beggars kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? He told them. The man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed and now I can see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know. He replied. Then they took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees because it was on the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it. So he told them he put the mud over my eyes and when I washed it away, I could see. Now, let me point out that in verse eight, it says his neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar, they didn't recognize him. They was like, who is this man? Is, is this the same man that used to sit and beg? Like, I know, I feel like I know him, but that don't really look like him. What's really going on? Like pick up in verse 15, it says the Pharisees asked the man all about it. So he told them he put the mud over my eyes. And when I washed it away, I could see some of the Pharisees said, this man, Jesus is not from God for he is working on the Sabbath. Others said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. We could really preach on that. Not going to let's move along. 17. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, what's your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been blind and could now see. So they called in his parents. They asked them, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he now see? His parents replied, we know this is our son and that he was born blind, but we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. 
His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why they said he is old enough. Ask him. <laughs> His parents were foul. <laughs> they was like, I don't know. What the heck would you ask me for? I wasn't even there. I was there at his birth and yes, he was blind and now he can see. I don't know how that happened. Go ask him. He grown. <laughs> I swear it'd be your own folks. Amen. Um, now listen, I'm going to let y'all read the rest of that. I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to leave y'all there because there's no way that y'all don't want to go pick up your word after that and figure out what happened. There, there's just no way. Go read the rest of the story. Okay. We're in John 9, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's the fourth book of the New Testament. Go pick up your own personal Bible and read the rest of that story. Okay. Um, going back to the Bible study. So I obviously read the entire thing. And then when you go back to the book, there's an outline. The outline from what I see, it like points things out. It highlights things in the word that you may have missed over or that you may just didn't quite understand. And it's so good. But there was this one part that really shook me that I wanted to touch on. It said, while the man is surely rejoicing, his neighbors, the same ones who had known him as a blind beggar, have trouble recognizing him. It could be because of his physical healing, but it's clear this man had also experienced an emotional and social healing, replacing his shame with confidence and belonging. That is something that I have never, I never thought about that, right? I've read the story so many times. I told you guys I did a teaching on the top of that story, the first few verses. I never put two and two together. Like why? Did these people no longer recognize this man, right? He's a blind beggar. They say his neighbors, they've known him. They've known him as this blind beggar. They've known this man. So clearly they recognize him. They know who he is. Why now that he can see, why is he unrecognizable to people that know him, right? If I close my eyes and I can't see nothing, I still look like Chelsea, right? Do I still look like Chelsea now that I got sight? Yes, I do. So why can they not recognize him? Not that his eyes were closed. Maybe his eyes was open. You know, don't be technical. But why now can they not recognize him just because he got the healing that he he needed, right? Now that he has sight, they can't, they don't know who he is. And that really shook me to my core. And you know why? Because Jesus completely renews you, baby. He don't, he does not just heal the part of you that needs healing. He transforms your entire being. That's Bible, put scripture on it, okay? Um, In this, in the Bible study, it said it could be because of his physical healing, right? Maybe he does look a little different. It's like when you put a hat on, you take a hat off. You look, you look low key different. It's like, is it really you? I don't know. So maybe he does look different with, with his sight. Maybe not a nut. He can't look that different to where his neighbors don't even recognize that it's him, but all right. It says, but it's clear. This man had also experienced an emotional and social healing, replacing his shame with confidence and belonging. God does not just heal the part of you that needs healing. He completely transforms who you are. And I can speak about that in my own life, right? I look different. I talk different. I act different. I walk different. My personality is different. My vibe is different. My energy is different, bro. I could go on forever. I am a completely different individual now that I finally allowed God to completely transform my life. He did not just heal the parts of me that needed healing. He didn't just take out my toxic traits. He didn't just change the cards that I was dealt, right? He didn't just heal me. He completely made me new. Even if I look the same, I don't look the same. And those that used to know me, they know what I'm talking about. I don't look the same at all. You walk, when you walk with Jesus, you walk with a different confidence, baby. You walk with a different swag to you. You walk without fear, without shame. It's like, I know this is who I am. And I know that I'm not perfect, but I don't care nothing about that. I'm a child of God. I don't have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not embarrassed of these things that I used to be embarrassed about, right? Like I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm not trying to be better. I'm not comparing myself to anybody. I'm walking as who God needs me to be. Like when you walk with God, bro, is he doesn't just change certain things about you that needs healing. He doesn't just heal certain parts of you. He completely makes you new. He makes you an entirely different individual to the point you are unrecognizable to the people that used to know you. Like the people that I used to kick it with, the people that I used to party with, the people that even really used to know me don't know me anymore. Like I'm completely different. 
same old Chelsea. You know, this is the same old man, but he's not the same man. He's unrecognizable. They're like, I swear that's him, but I can't really tell. That's how people be with me too. And that's how people going to be with you too. When you stop running from God, you stop running from the calling, you stop running from this transformation, right? And you actually open your heart up and you surrender and say, okay, God, show me what you have for me. Show me what you have in store for me. Like show me who I have the potential to be if I stop trying to save myself and I allow God to do his job, right? So many of us are trying to play God in our lives. Why are you trying to save yourself, friend? Why are you trying to save yourself? It just, it don't make sense. You're exhausted, you're tired, you're overwhelmed, you got too much going on, and now you're walking this world with no sight. And God is just standing there like, if you only knew, I could heal all of that and then some, okay? I'm not just gonna give you your sight back. I'm gonna give you vision. Ooh, that's a whole nother word, baby. We see, we're not gonna make it too long now. That's a whole nother word in itself. You don't just get your sight back, baby. You get vision, you get an idea of who you could be. You get a picture in your mind of who God created you to be. And then he gives you step-by-step -step details on how to step into that thing. I'm trying to tell you, I didn't get here where I am today by my own doing. I'm nothing, okay? But now I have God. And God gives me this strength and this authority and this endurance and this confidence that you, you have to see it in me. God gives me this light that I never used to have. I'm the same old Chelsea yet brand new, baby. That's what happened in the story, right? Like they, they didn't recognize him anymore because it wasn't just the sight that he got. He got vision, right? Like he got this, this confidence about him there was so much change and who he's always been he probably sounded different he acted different he was walking like yeah i'm me i'm me you know what i'm saying like when he was blind i'm sure he was walking as if he was lacking something he was living in lack right and mind you what shame and stuff does that come with when you're living in lack which we all have been you're living in lack if you're living without the lord you're you're living in a lot of lack but when you're living in lack, it's like you walk with this idea that there's more out there for you that you haven't touched yet, that you are incapable of getting, right? It's like you you have this sorrow about yourself. You're like, dang, I, I mean, I'm cool, but I'm living without this, right? Like this this resentment, uh, this this bitterness of like, dang, I wish I had this. I wish I had this. Why do they get this, but I don't get this? Like when you're living in lack, it's like, it's something that you think about all the time and you walk with your head down. When he got his sight back, he was walking with his head up. And mind you, it didn't have nothing to do with no sight while he was unrecognizable to other people, right? Like we said, you don't look that different now that you can see. You walk different though. You walk with your head up. You walk like you got somewhere to be, right? When God re renews you, not just when God heals you, but that too, but not just when God heals you, but when God renews you, you walk different. It's like you walk like you got somewhere to be, like you got something to do. You got something to lose. You don't keep making stupid, ridiculous decisions that can cost you because you're after something. You have purpose now, right? Jesus. We can really preach on this. Now, I'm going to stop it there because I think y'all get the point. Y'all get the gist. But this Bible study, I mean, truly is so good. And I didn't even finish That's I just said all that based on that one little snippet right there. That one little thing, um, because that was that was so good to me. And that's something I love Bible study books and stuff like this. Now, I don't recommend all of them. So. I'm treading lightly on this one because I haven't read the whole thing yet. I did link it on my TikTok shop thing um, and it, it was on sale for like two days. I think it said it was $19.99 or something. Amen. But I love Bible study books like that because it picks out certain things that you might have missed. I missed that. It's like I saw it. I understood that he was unrecognizable, but I didn't really see it. See it. Like why? Why now he can see and now everybody don't know who he is. There's only one explanation for that. It's because God didn't just give him his sight back. God completely transformed that man. God made him new. Ooh, we, that is so good. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there because y'all know, if y'all know me, y'all know I could talk all day, child, especially about some scripture. I love me some scripture, um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully you guys found some value from that short little Bible study. I would love to keep doing more. Um, I'm going to dig into this actual Bible study here and see if there's more, um, 
gems in here because I have a feeling if I just randomly turn to this page I have a strong feeling that there's going to be more in there but otherwise if you're new here thank you so much for tuning in if you're not new here thank you for showing up again um, I promise I promise I will be posting more videos if you are a woman that is trying to strengthen your faith journey or just looking for fellowship, looking for community, looking for women that are like-minded and on the same sort of journey as you, um, you can click any of the links in any of my bios to get information on my monthly mentorship. It is all faith-based. We do all the morning prayer calls. We do all the live Bible studies and all the things. It is the most beautiful part of my entire career. Honestly, I love every second of the monthly mentorship. God is doing his big one in that group. Okay. So all the details, like I said, are at the link in any of my bios and that's all. I'm going to go take a shower and get dressed now, y'all. I, I literally am still in my jammies. I did not plan on making that video, but I'm glad I did. Amen. Amen. Okay. Bye friends. <laughs>